Hi everyone, one of my favourite diagram analyses right here is the impact that subsidy has on a market. We've already looked at subsidy in very brief detail. This is the real heart of the theory, how a subsidy has an impact on the market. What we're going to do is dissect the diagram down, we're going to actually isolate uh, what a subsidy does in a market, and I'm going to look at the effect it has on government, producers and consumers. So, let's get started here by looking at the very basics. We know that a subsidy reduces the cost of production for producers, uh, therefore shifting the supply curve downwards, or we can write that down. So supply curve shifts downwards from S1 to S1 plus sub. Lowering the cost of production. Shifting supply down. Don't say to the right in an exam. Say shift downwards because that downward shift is the value of the subsidy. And in fact, that's something you should be aware of as well. The vertical distance between the two supply curves is the monetary value of the subsidy. So it's a downward shift. As a result, a new equilibrium in the market is formed from P1, Q1 to now P2, Q2. So we can say, as a result of a subsidy, the price is falling from P1 to P2, and the quantity is increasing from Q1 to Q2. Very simple stuff. That is the utter basics right there. Great. Let's now go in detail and have a very detailed look about how a subsidy affects these three key stakeholders. Let's start with the government. Well, we know subsidies cost the government. On our diagram, we can work out by exactly how much the government has to pay for this subsidy. Again, the vertical distance between the two supply curves is the value of the subsidy, times that by the number of units sold as a result of the subsidy being implemented, and we have a cost of the government. So to the new equilibrium, P2Q2, the vertical distance going up is the value of the subsidy times by the number of units produced there, which is Q2, gives us an area. So let's call that D and let's call that E. So then the total cost of the government is the value of the subsidy times the number of units being sold, which is P2, B, D and E. And that is the cost to the government. Let's have a look at the impact on producers. Producers absolutely love a subsidy. To work out why, let's compare their revenues before a subsidy and their revenues now after the subsidy has been given to them. Well, before the subsidy was being implemented, they were producing at P1 and they were selling Q1. So their total revenue was P1A, Q1, zero. Great stuff, fair enough. However, their new revenues are now much higher. So that box was pretty big, but now they're selling more units and the subsidy is being given to them. There you get the money. How fantastic for them. And think about it, a subsidy is just a money grant given to producers. So producers get a whole lot of cash and they can decide pretty much what they want to do with it. So that money is given to producers, added on basically to their revenue. So before, if we can, we can isolate these impacts. So we can look at um, old rev, shall we call it old rev, was equal to P1, A, Q1 and zero. That was that old revenue, but now their new revenue their new revenue is what? They're selling Q2, but actually the price they're getting is equivalent to E because they are getting the subsidy as well. So even though, in truth, they're charging consumers P2, on top of that, they're getting a subsidy which is equal in terms of value to E and P2. So really, the price they're actually getting is E. So their new revenue is actually equal to E, D, Q2, zero. Oh, producers absolutely adore that. Lucky them. What about consumers? Are they as lucky? Well, they're lucky in one sense, because have a look. Before the subsidy, they were paying price P1 for Q1 units. They can now buy Q1 units at a lower price, call it P2 here. Right? So they're actually saving. They're saving P1, P2, AC. Right? That's how much they're saving. So that's a good thing for consumers as well. They are saving. So they save P1, P2, AC. They're now paying for Q1 units at a lower price. Fantastic news for consumers. But bear in mind as well that extra units are being sold and being produced, and the consumer is paying more for those units. They're paying P2 for Q2 units here. So the difference in Q1 and Q2 are the extra units being bought by consumers. They're paying P2 for that. There is an extra cost there. So consumers pay extra, and the exact amount they pay extra is a little rectangle Q1, Q2, CB. So this little rectangle here is the extra that consumers are paying and that's all going to producers as well. Right, so producers not only get the subsidy value, they also get the extra 
revenue that consumers are paying for these extra units that are being produced as well. So let's just kind of go through and analyse the impacts on key stakeholders here. The government. The government are the only ones really suffering, and they are suffering quite majorly. It's a big cost to implement a subsidy into a market. And they need to work out whether the opportunity cost uh, means that this wasn't a great decision. They need to consider where that money could have also been spent. Could that money, instead of going to this producer, have best been spent maybe on, on education and healthcare, on the allocation of public goods, um, on you know, policing instead, on building infrastructure. They need to work out whether this money is really being used to its optimum if it's given to producers in this market. Also, they need to consider, well, where has that money come from? Has that money been borrowed? In which case, does that mean the future taxes will rise? You know? Has that money come from other key areas of the economy, and thus those areas will not be neglected? Has it come from welfare spending, thus increasing inequality, etc.? So the government has got to really consider whether it can afford the subsidy, and whether the opportunity cost makes it worthwhile to actually do this subsidy or not. If the cost of doing this is high and higher than uh, the benefits that would have accrued elsewhere, then maybe we think. Producers love it. Oh, geez, they absolutely adore this. What an easy way to earn more revenue. Fantastic. And consumers like it as well. Now, something to look out for consumers. Yes, they're saving money. They are paying a bit extra. But consider this, right? Um, consumers were paying P1. As a result of a subsidy, they're now paying P2 instead. But really, if you look at it carefully, at the initial equilibrium, as a result of the subsidy, the true price, the price if all of the subsidy was passed on to the consumer, should have been at P3. Right? And if the price being charged to consumers was at P3, then they would be benefiting fully from the subsidy. But because it's only the price being charged is P2, P2, P3 of the subsidy is being kept by the producer. So even though consumers are saving, they're not benefiting from the whole subsidy. Right? And this is where the intention of the subsidy may break down. Um, producers may not use it for the intentions that governments have implied it for. They may actually keep most of it within the business. And in my example here, a lot of it is being kept in the business. Some of it's being passed on and consumers are saving, but some of it is being uh, uh, kept within the business too. So bear that in mind. Consumers don't fully benefit from the subsidy. Producers do gain a lot as well. Right? So yes, they save some. They're not saving fully, but they also pay a little bit extra. And that's something a lot of students actually forget as well. And finally, because we are distorting market outcomes, a subsidy does also cause a deadweight loss to society equal to the triangle A, B, D. So if I put down here, there is a deadweight loss to society equal to A, B, D. Uh, watch my video on why a subsidy causes a deadweight loss to understand that. A really very interesting, really stimulating uh, idea here. It's something to get your head around. And if you're a top economist, you'll watch that video and you'll understand. Thanks for watching. This is really is one of my favourite diagrams. It's a fantastic bit of analysis. Hopefully now you understand it and I'm just as in enthusiastic and happy about this as I am. Thanks for watching. See you all next time.